looking to make some custom emotes for Discord or Twitch? Well, let me show you how I made mine. Hello everyone, my name is S Comic Maker, and today we are finally making some emotes. A lot of you guys have been asking me on my Discord when we would finally get some, and I thought if I turn it into a video, it would force me to get cracking on it. Alright, so first things first. I started with making a canvas that was 800 by 800 at 350 DPI. I've seen a lot of people do this for 300 DPI, it's really whatever you want. The higher the DPI, the better the quality, but you don't need to go crazy for emotes since they need to be resized smaller later. Then I open another canvas, this time much larger. In the end, mine ended up being really big at like 8,138 by 3,745. You can always make it bigger the more emotes you make or shrink it down. I colored the 800 by 800 square and I copied it and pasted it over to the bigger canvas. Then you go ahead and start duplicating it a bunch until you have a set of squares that you can work with. And then it's time to get on to the sketching. From here, I went with a couple basic expressions and started to try and think about some of the things that relate directly to my channel. This part is where you can really get creative. Funny expressions are always great, but having a couple things that relate directly to your channel is what can make your emotes really special or unique. For example, I included an RN Jesus emote because of my channel's history of using random generators. I also made a Banana Man one because he's one of my main mascots. Yeah, John! right I am. I made Very Melon because it is an incredible artistic experience with music that has created an unbreakable bond between my viewers and my husband. If you're curious as to what the heck I'm talking about and want to catch Very Melon's heart, I'll <laughs> leave a link in the description. Anyway, after sketching them, I went through and adjusted and redrew some and got on to inking and coloring. The hardest part about emotes is making sure that your expressions are going to read well from afar. Sometimes it isn't until after your emotes are completely finished that you realize that it just doesn't work. You have to think about if you really want to include words, and if you do, how much of it will take up the space of your emote. Make sure you are zooming out to see how far your emotes look from afar. I chose to give my emotes a thick black outline to help them pop, and then another white outline that goes around it so that it can help define it. By having both, it helps you to be able to see your emote better against light and dark backgrounds, but this is totally optional. I've seen a lot of emotes with colored line art or with no white borders. It really is all about your preferences. The next thing you want to keep in mind is sizing. As of the release of this video, I don't have a Twitch partnership yet because I've actually only been streaming on YouTube now for the past two years, but have only recently started simul streaming on Twitch. Speaking of, follow me there if you would like. But anyway, Twitch has very specific dimensions for their emotes and I will have my emotes ready for when the time comes, but in the meantime, I can still use them for my Discord server. The dimensions for Twitch are 112 by 112, 56 by 56, and 28 by 28. So three different versions of a square. If you start off initially drawing at that size, you're going to have emotes that are insanely pixelated. So working larger and at a higher resolution makes it so that you can resize your art later and keep your quality in there. When resizing, I kept that 800 by 800 canvas still open and then I went back to my big page of emotes and saved two versions. One where all of my layers are there and a second with my art layers merged together so that each of those is like a separate sticker or a separate emote. This way, if I ever wanted to go back and fix things, then I can fix the ones that are on the separate layer, or if I wanted to just make small, tiny adjustments on the final ones, then I have two versions to do that. Now this part is important to keep in mind. Don't merge your art down to the layer that has all of your squares. The reason for this is it will be so much easier to grab your artwork with the square as your guide, but then you still have the areas around your emote transparent. So here's what I did. On the Layer with my squares, I took my selection tool, selected the area outside of the squares, and clicked on the artwork layer and deleted any of the things that are outside of the squares so it stays all nice and clean. Then I went one by one, selecting one square at a time, clicking on my art layer, copied the art, and pasted it onto my 800 by 800 canvas. From here, I went to edit, 
change image resolution, and resize the R2 112 by 112. Saved it as a PNG so that my background was transparent, undid that, then went on to the second one by changing the image resolution to 56 by 56, saved it, undid it for the last time, then changed the resolution to 28 by 28. I saved them all in a nice folder and named them so that each batch can be kept together, and that's about it. Now it's just a matter of testing them out. If you have grown yourself a community, I suggest that you ask them what they think. I wanted to make sure that I created emotes and stickers that my subscribers would really enjoy using and wanted to use a lot. So be sure to ask them what they think. I found that after staring at them for so long, the feedback made me think about what I needed to change and what emotes I should make in the future. Also, shout out to you guys on Discord and in my streams for your suggestions. For our Discord server, I still have 26 emotes that I can make and there are still some I want to change, so let me know in the comments below what other emotes you would like to see so that I can make them, or leave a comment if you have any questions. Now, I didn't know anything about making emotes at first, but that's the great thing about the internet. Someone, somewhere, has probably gone through something similar to you and has posted about it, especially when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I can't take all the credit for what I have learned here and I actually followed Baban Illustration's emote tutorials. I listened to some other ones but hers was insanely thorough. I recommend you check them out if you want an in-depth description of layers, colors, and wording for your emotes. Her art is gorgeous and I couldn't make these emotes without her. I'll leave links to her emote tutorials in the description if you're interested. That's it for me this week, guys. Remember the deadline for our 5k dance party is May 2nd of 2020. If you need to see the rules for participating, I'll leave an iCard here. Thank you so much to all of my amazing patrons and to people like you for liking, commenting, and sharing my videos. It means the world to me. I appreciate you all stopping by and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye guys.